This is not really going to be a review, it's simply my opinion. I'm going to have very minimal time with this one. The reality is, comparing performance for keyboards in 2024 is a strange thing to do. Most keyboards are good enough, like they all sound really good these days. If you're spending a little bit extra cheddar on something, like a GSK 910, Getting the best is less important than just getting what you like. If you want the best bang for the buck, the budget category is king these days. So let's go ahead and talk about the GSK. So it's a TGR and GSK 910. There's the rose gold variant, and it has a copper weight, aluminum backplate, and a sandblasted stainless steel Toblerone. Pretty solid keyboard. It builds upon the easier to manufacture TGR 910ME, and this was a groundbreaking move in the keyboard space at the time because the 910ME was easier to manufacture and could be made in larger quantities, it could be made for cheaper, so more people could get their hands on the 910ME. To give you a quick summary on the 910ME, it had a PVD stainless steel Toblerone weight at the rear, but the back weight is aluminum. And they had top mount o-ring, which is considered just to be the higher end mounting versus any kind of gasket board. It sounded a bit hollow and needed a bit of force break, but really needed custom heavier rear weights to make it sound really good. An aluminum and aluminum board, it's just not gonna sound as full and thick as the nicer boards with some kind of heavy weight in the back. Because it wasn't as good sounding, although it was an affordable TGR 910, not a lot of people liked it. It was nice to have, but it wasn't as solid out of the box as other boards that you could get. The GSK 910 here is basically the same as that board, except you skip having to get your own custom back weight and you got your copper right there, so pretty nice. The top right blocker right here, you can get polycarbonate to get that RGB to shine through. The RGB is courtesy of the McLovin PCB. Although it's hot swap, you get your sing and bottom, which is really nice. The top right blocker and the rear weight are different from the 910ME, and this is gonna be a taste thing because this is golden star keycap of Vietnam's like design. This is a keyboard you get if you like GSK. The artisans are top notch, but if you've never heard of them, you may have your own opinions on the design of the top right blocker and the rear weight. The back plate here is magnetic, so they still do that. But instead of using the little spudger tool, you get this little suction cup. You just, uh, and then you pull it off, which is nicer, but it's also kind of weird. You still get your Toblerone weight. You still got the top mount O-ring and some interesting badge options. It is a seamless side, so it's much cleaner than my VKC unit. I actually really like the aesthetic of this board. By all accounts, this is an end game level 65 percent keyboard and an end game level 910. The only thing that made the 910ME feel a bit cheap was the aluminum weight which affected heft and sound. The rolls gold with the silver backplate and the copper weight is a very classic combo and looks great. You can't really argue with the color choices here, it looks primo for sure. You don't get wild color options, but all the options you do get are very classy. I definitely swapped the PC badge to utilize the RGB and it looks great. There's risk of light leak, especially since we're using the polycarbonate to play here there's like a triple stack of leds in here so it's super freaking bright it's gonna blind you i personally like the rgb badge because it gives us some flair because i don't really like the g by itself personal choice i like this keyboard because it has all the modern fixings while retaining the enthusiast desires you know like clean colors minimal bezels and nothing too crazy like nothing too crazy like screens knobs and things like that the gsk branding is strong here because they're well known for the artisan so it is what it is this board will yield a drier sound compared to like other gasket options and cheaper keyboards but honestly even the top mount of the qk65 v2 is catching up to the sound of these end game 65s the gap is getting very small these days so really you're not paying for better sound sound and feel, you're just paying for something that you just personally like, okay? Like, that's what you gotta focus on. I didn't like the fact that this thing had a million screws, there's like a million underneath this, and I got really confused when trying to put this together that my mod actually had to DM me on stream circling each thing and telling me where it went. The main thing that makes an expensive 65% keyboard feel cheap is the sound. We definitely did try some more expensive 65s and it sounded hollow without foam and that's just uh, that's just not gonna fly with me, especially if I'm paying a lot of extra money for it. Honestly, the board didn't even need force break, which is a solid, solid design. I think it has to do with the back weight. With the upgraded weight, it sounded way better than 910ME. I ended up force breaking the inside weight anyway because I had to open it up for the JST. So might as well just throw some layers of tape to reduce some of the metal on metal contact. So about opening this thing, it's a little bit tough. You have to use a suction thing, undo a bunch of screws, pull this out, and then you have to take off the inner weight. Then you got to throw in the JST, you got to feed it through, then I screw it down. And to put it together, you had to do it kind of backwards. The PCB had to be connected to the bottom and then you put the top on top. I was all types of confused during the stream. Even with these expensive keyboards, modern keyboards, the JSC connector design still makes assembly a chore. It's just really complicated and very finicky. Even with boards like the Forever 65, you need the patience to really get the JSC to fit in the slot properly without cutting it. In the end, all the work was worth it because the JSC was hidden well, so it's a clean look 
but it took me a while to get there. Overall, it still is not as rough as the JSC design of the unicorn. Because of the drop-in design, I ended up scratching the case a lot because of skill issues. Now for the sound. We did MX Browns on PC in top mount because it's unironically a really nice sound if you want to use Cherry MX Browns. The PC plate works well with the thinner sound of the MX Browns, but you still gotta break in and loop behind the Leaf MX Browns because of the leaf ping issues and the scratchiness. So it is a lot of work to use MX Browns. So if you're not down with the meme, don't worry about MX Browns. There's plenty of other switches that even sound good factory loop that don't have leaf ping. In the end, there's not much wrong with this keyboard that can boil down to personal preference. They did fix the requirement for the wedging tool like the 910ME, but you just gotta use a suction thing now and it's just kind of weird, but it works. There's one big thing that's wrong though. It's kind of glaring. The board with the hot swap PCB and the aluminum plate by itself, just a stock configuration, is $690 plus $90 shipping. So $780 before you even get started. With an extra PC plate and a hot swap PCB and a little polycarbonate badge, it was $889. The configuration that you see on screen here with the broken NMX Browns, the keycaps, and the stabilizers is over $1,100. It's totally unnecessary to get to this price point for a good sounding keyboard. But if you're in the market for this, you know who you are. You don't need some washed up streamer to tell you. So what do you think of the GSK 910? Is it worth 780 shipped bare bones for you? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.